His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a telephone call from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, who was reassured about His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's health. His Highness the Emir wished the Premier good health and well being and lauded the country's strong fraternal bonds. His Royal Highness expressed gratitude to the Kuwaiti Emir for his sincere brotherly sentiments, which reflect the true bonds of friendship and fraternity between the two countries. His Royal Highness also received a telephone call from the Kuwaiti National Guard's Deputy Chief Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah congratulating him upon the successful medical checkups and wishing His Royal Highness lasting good health. His Royal Highness expressed gratitude to the National Guard's deputy chief for his kind brotherly feelings. Shura Council Vice Chairman Jamal Fakhro chaired the Council's weekly meeting in which they discussed a draft law on the organization of pension and retirement benefits for government employees. The Council then expressed its congratulations to all Bahraini women, marking Bahraini Women Day and hailed the remarkable contribution in the development march of the kingdom. They highlighted Bahraini women's achievements on both regional and international levels under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, as well as the constant support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Council also lauded the major role played by the Supreme Council for Women, chaired by Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa in supporting and developing Bahraini women on various levels. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, paid an inspection visit to the site of the Under Construction Intermediate Girls' School in Busaitin to check the progress of work. The minister said the new school is part of a plan to establish more schools across the kingdom to reinforce basic educational infrastructure, commending the support of the government, which pays great attention to education. He pointed out the new school has modern characteristics in engineering and construction, in addition to interior design, and the facility will provide to students with special needs. He he said this new school will serve many housing blocks, adding that the ministry will move 300 students from Zenobia School to the new one once completed. Patronized by the Foreign Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the National Committee for Combating Human Trafficking and the Labor Market Regulatory Authority organized the opening ceremony of a shelter for human trafficking victims and expatriates, which is considered the first of its kind in the region. More in this report. The Expatriates Protection Unit and Shelter for Human Trafficking Victims is established in line with the directive of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, last May. The facility has been established within six months thanks to the collaborative efforts of various government bodies. Today is a testimony towards the Kingdom's commitment to eradicating all uh, possible cases that uh, resemble this heinous crime. Today, we not only open a shelter, we open what we hope will keep the shelter empty by assisting the most vulnerable cases in society into sorting out their situations before they are victimized. We do this in cooperation with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, with two civil societies, three hospitals, and five ministries that are represented in this place as, as I said, a testimony to everyone's commitment towards solving this issue. The dedicated anti-human trafficking center deals with labor issues and further provides victims of trafficking or abuse with a safe temporary shelter as well as the necessary medical, psychological and social assistance. We know that trafficking is, is often um, a situation in which an individual is, is held in a trapped situation where they're, they're deprived freedom of movement, where they're, they're often held in a room with no windows, where they don't have access to, um, to the identity documents, they're deprived food, they're deprived water. And to walk into a shelter, you feel uh, such as this, you feel that the, the staff have really made a conscientious effort to reintroduce that, that sense of, of well-being and dignity within, within the individual. The move reflects the Kingdom of Bahrain's humanitarian and international commitment toward the labor force which contributes to the economic development and cultural diversity of Bahrain. The United Nations finds uh, 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 these messages as very, very positive messages uh, that reflects the commitment of uh, the National Committee on Combating Human Trafficking and, and, and I would have to say the commitment of the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain at large. It was not long ago before even His Majesty the King himself announces uh, uh, um, uh, his commitment and his uh, will to uh, uh, 
uh, enter into partnership with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime uh, to administer a major criminal justice uh, uh, reform in uh, the law enforcement and criminal justice framework of, uh, uh, of the Kingdom of uh, Bahrain. The shelter maximum capacity reaches 200 and includes office for the issuance of identity cards, training center, call center and volunteering doctors. Minister of Labor and Social Development Jamil Ahmedan opened a three-day career expo in the medical field. A total of 37 institutions representing all medical fields in the private sector are taking part in the career expo, which targets the holders of university and high school certificates and diplomas. The participating enterprises in the expo are showcasing the vacancies available in the medical and nursing sector. They are also receiving employment applications which are submitted directly to the job seekers. This is the second career expo organized by the Ministry of Labor and Social Development development to employ job seekers. The latest international conference to be hosted by the Kingdom, the IISS Bahrain Bay Forum 2015, got underway today following an opening reception held last night. We now turn to Danielle de Porto with this report. The Bahrain Bay Forum was organized by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, or IISS, the same organization responsible for conducting the Manama Dialogues. However, whereas the dialogues focus on the problems of the region, the Bahrain Bay Forum focuses on the business opportunities. The whole idea of the Bahrain Bay Forum is to um, brief investors, business leaders, media, policymakers from around the world about both the political risk and the business opportunity in the Middle East. Because most people, when they think of the Middle East today, think only about risk. They think about the conflicts. What we are trying to show is that this is also a region of business opportunity. That it's a growth region and there are a lot of investment opportunities for business. So you need to balance the risk with the opportunity. The event, themed Middle East Regional Security and Business Opportunity, attracted economic policymakers, business leaders, diplomats and geo-economic experts from around the world, with heavy representation of the G20 nations. The forum opened last night with an address from Bahrain's Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Al-Zayani, and continued today with a number of plenary and breakout sessions, examining every perspective of the region's economic landscape and how it may relate to other regions. There was much optimism regarding the economic prospects of Bahrain and the GCC, despite persistent low oil prices. There are very strong structural drivers uh, that are moving this economy forward, and particular things like the demographic dynamics, uh, the diversification, of course the connectivity in the region, uh, etc. I think these are things that are supporting growth, sort of come what may. Regarding the wider Middle East region, there was optimism that not only could perceived business risks be overcome, but that opportunities may be born directly as a result of these risks and uncertainties. I think the uh, most important thing is that uh, we, both regions, you know, like uh, uh, East Asia, for example, I'm representing, and Middle East, you know, GCC regions, we know, we learn each other uh, from uh, experts' view. So maybe uh, enhancing the knowledge you know, between the two uh, different regions may contribute uh, in the reduction of risk or whatever that uncertainty in the future. Uh, lots of infrastructure opportunities and future industrial development in, in the Middle East Asia. I think uh, we, we have a great opportunity, even though we have a high you know, risk or uncertainty, which create uh, more opportunity in the, in the, in the, in the end. The IISS Bahrain Bay Forum should help all the international attendees to navigate the regional security concerns in order to maximize all available business opportunities. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.